One of the chief concerns people mention when someone brings up water fasting is the effect on electrolytes. Imbalances in electrolytes can cause death, and rather unpleasantly at that. For example, abnormally high potassium can cause heart attacks, and abnormally low sodium can cause seizures. So it stands to reason that you may want to know if you are endangering yourself by abstaining from food, which contain electrolytes that we subsist on. The information we'll be going over comes from a study that I analyzed wherein people stayed in a lab under scientific observation and underwent a five-day water fast. Obviously, they had their electrolytes measured before the fast at the three-day mark and the five-day mark, ending the fast, and then again at the one- and three-month marks. The results are actually pretty surprising, especially what happens after the fast, but let's first discuss the results of the fast itself. As I mentioned, having too little sodium in your blood leads to your brain cells, specifically neurons, to no longer be able to send an electrical signal across the brain. The neurons depend on a certain concentration of sodium inside of the cell, as well as a certain concentration of potassium outside of the cell. If that balance is altered too significantly, the neurons can no longer depolarize, meaning it can no longer activate. If this happens across millions and millions of neurons, you start to have changes in behavior and mood and then confusion and then seizures and then coma and then the Grim Reaper visits you. It isn't fun. Likewise, if there's too much potassium, heart cells, known as pacemaker cells especially, the cells are unable to activate, similar to neurons, leading to the heart no longer beating. I suppose I don't need to spell out the problems with that scenario. Two words. Grim Reaper. So is it actually a concern? We compare the baseline values to the five days fasting values and sure enough the results show that blood levels of sodium decrease and potassium levels increase. But there are two things to consider here. One, are these effects long-standing? And two, are these changes dangerous? You'd think the answer is obvious for the second question, considering what I just explained, but the reality is that you have an organ that protects you when you decide to make drastic changes to your nutrition or even your general behavior. That organ is your kidney or kidneys, since they usually come as a buy one, get one free deal. The kidneys have the ability to recycle electrolytes, meaning if they sense that the bloodstream is losing or gaining electrolytes, they can reabsorb electrolytes or allow more to be excreted from the urine. Now, in doing so, they preserve the integrity of the electrolytes in the blood, but does that apply to the complete absence of food consumption? Well, yes, yes it does. While we see reductions in sodium and increases in potassium, the results are very much in the normal range, meaning the kidneys are fulfilling their function of controlling the loss of and recycling of electrolytes. Now, before we move on to the long-term effects, I'd like to mention that the researchers also looked at chloride, calcium, and magnesium levels. All of them changed, but within the same magnitude discussed for sodium and potassium, so all still within the normal range. But what of the long-term effects? Do these electrolytes recover back to their original levels after one and three months? Surprisingly, not always. Sodium was actually elevated one month later, while potassium returned to normal within a month. Sodium took longer, and interestingly, magnesium stayed high even three months later. So there are some long-term effects of water fasting, but again, all these values are technically within normal ranges, so it's unlikely to be a health concern. Still, ultimately, while it isn't advised that you drown yourself in electrolytes, it wouldn't do the body harm to sip on a small amount of electrolytes. The point being, however, that it is unlikely that there will be major negative health effects unless you suffer from something like kidney problems or some other health concern, according to this study. So speaking of the health concerns, you might be interested in the actual health effects like cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, and more that occur from water fasting. If that's the case, then I'd highly recommend that you check out the next video that I have for you that covers all of those areas. I'll speak to you there. Bye.